hand over to our final moderator for the day, um, the wonderful Scott McDonald, President and CEO of the ARF, and technically my boss, I'm delighted to say, um, but a good one. Uh, Scott, over to you. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, thanks, John. And I would like to welcome uh, the last panel of the day to uh, unmute themselves and open their, uh, their, their cameras. Um, and um, so uh, I'm going to, I think most everybody knows uh, the folks that are on this panel, but let me uh, quickly introduce them. Radha Subramanyam, Chief Research and Analytics Officer of CBS Corporation, a part of Paramount, uh, and uh, President of CBS Vision. Uh, Bharad Ramesh, Executive Director, Research uh, and Investment Analytics at Group M. And Tina Daniels, who's Managing Director, Agency and Brand Measurement Analytics at Google. So uh, welcome uh, to all of you. Um, this discussion, uh, uh, most of what we've talked about so far today has really been about the ways that we count ad impressions and content across platforms and devices. Um, but our final discussion today is uh, taking a little different turn in, the, in that we uh, are going to be considering how we might define and measure the quality of those ad impressions. Um, so quality can be a fighting word in our business. Uh, I'm reminded a bit of uh, Justice Potter Stewart's uh, quip about porn, the Casablanca test. He knows he couldn't define it, but he knows it when he sees it. Uh, in the history of media measurement, people have generally tried to capture quality in different ways, most often focusing on the quality of the media environment in which the ad is placed. Uh, so measures of the caliber or relevance of the audience, the match between the intended target and the delivered target, uh, or measures of context or production values of that media environment, um, or sometimes measures of media engagement. Think of things like IAG uh, or the engagement index in print. Um, but sometimes the focus has been on measuring the quality of the ad impression itself, the ad unit, without regard to the medium that carries it. Um, so to use the Super Bowl as an example, uh, it's the distinction between talking about the quality of a 60 second spot showing a QR code compared to talking about the value of being able to show your ad in the context of a Super Bowl broadcast. So we could debate either one. Uh, I think from the uh, discussion that we'd had in the warm up talk, we're going to focus primarily on the questions of how you measure the quality of the media in environment uh, and, and how that may or may not affect an ad's effectiveness. So let's start uh, by um, asking for the panel's reaction to the overall quest for a neutral and fair metric uh, for assessing the quality of media environment into which an ad impression is delivered. Can this be done? Uh, what are the challenges? And if it can't be done, uh, are we to believe that all environments are equivalent? Thank you, Scott. And let me uh, take a moment to just sort of level set and set the stage. And then I'm sure Bharat and Tina would go far more in depth into some of this. Uh, you said a lot, right? And the, this industry says a lot, but there's a lot packed in there. And I think we have to start to differentiate and enumerate uh, what we're talking about. So let me be very specific. There are some things that can be objectively and cleanly measured. What are some of those? Did an ad get delivered? Is it viewable? Is the sound on? Is the sound off? What is the length? What is the duration? What is the duration waiting? In other words, how much of it was complete, right? There are some absolutely objective metrics that can cut across media that we can all measure and we should measure. Then there are some things that are in the middle. You can still categorize them as one, two, or three, uh, but perhaps it's not as simple as on off. Things like context, is something professionally produced? Is it brand safe, et cetera, right? Those fall in the middle, they can be measured, uh, but perhaps not quite simply and literally. And then there are other things that become more ephemeral, attention, ad quality, uh, to a certain extent, content quality. Those all fall in the range of, you know, uh, it's like pornography, if I see it, I know it, et cetera. I mean, perhaps not quite so extreme, um, and, but, th but they are um, harder to pin down, even though we as an industry have attempted many times to do so. So here's what I would start, right? 
I would say we should not confuse all of these and assume the same measurement works for everything. I think we absolutely should measure the things we can measure. Was something delivered? Was something viewed? What was the length? What was the duration? What was the duration waiting? These are things we should absolutely measure and we can work on all the others. I think ultimately what happens is between the agency and advertiser and media company, there is a short. We are assigning value to all of these things. Some of them may be highly transparent, some of them perhaps less so. Uh, but a lot of what you're talking about, the quantification of quality is actually happening, but perhaps it's not so easy to explain. I really should turn it over to my fellow panelists, but I wanna make one other statement, which is that the MRC has attempted to put out standards and George was very eloquent in the panel that just happened. Unfortunately, a lot of players are oversimplifying or misunderstanding or willfully misunderstanding what the MRC is trying to do. So the MRC is saying, um, you know, uh, two seconds, 50% viewable, uh, viewable is the minimum threshold. Some people are taking that to say, okay, 50% viewable minimal on a small screen is equivalent to a 60 second ad in the Super Bowl, which we all, it's common sense, it's just wrong. Right? It's just false. But I do feel we have to be careful for the players who try to use honest attempts and valiant attempts by people like the MRC and take them out of context for their own ends. Barad, do you want to take that? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, look, uh, from an advertiser perspective, we want to follow our audiences uh, who are increasingly spending a lot of time not in front of their TV set. Um, and so in content, in areas and online video, social gaming, et cetera. So what, what we need to define is a context of, you know, what is, uh, premium or what is quality and what hinders the migration at a very rapid scale. Uh, you know, the user numbers are there is this whole, um, what do you call it, the wall between, you know, what do you call it, premium quality, say primetime show versus user generated quality. Um, and for some clients, uh, they have crossed the chasm. DTC brands have built their business on digital and moved on to, uh, you know, TV. Um, and a lot of clients are making a journey the other way. So to that extent, I think it becomes a client by client decision. There are technical parameters that Radha outlined, MRC outlined. Those are technical standards. Yes, of course. But every client and every agency group has its own thresholds for what constitutes as a technically correct quality. And, um, you know, we have clients who are advertising for their brand launches with quote unquote high context and high quality environments. And the same clients are running a performance campaign, which is, which has got, uh, you know, different standards, so to speak. So both exist within the same client and within the same agency group. So it is a nuanced conversation for sure. Yeah. It's got yeah. where I, Come in on this is I, I maybe I can attempt to thread uh, what both Rada and Barad have said along with with some of the other panelists that we've heard from today and that's you know th that we believe um, we really have to start uh, with comparable and consistent impression reach and frequency counts um, to Rada's point and you know without agreement on these foundational metrics and frankly I would include brand safety as a foundational metric. Um, it's going to be pretty tough to get to agreement on these more rarefied uh, quality metrics. Um, I think Broad's point about marketer objectives is particularly important because, you know, envir quality environments uh, can be defined across many different dimensions. And even for one single marketer, um, some of those dimensions may be more or less relevant for a particular campaign. And I think it's a bit dangerous to, to attempt to get to one metric that perhaps is a lowest common denominator metric to um, evaluate quality. I just I don't see that serving marketers or agencies uh, particularly well. Well, Rada uh, did us a service in uh, mentioning quite a number of uh, measures that are uh, generally available um, and uh, made the point that um, we might value them differently as I think Barad did also, and in some cases, if you've got performance um, uh, measurement sort of built in, you've got a dependent variable that you really care about in short-term effects. Um, very often though, measures of quality are associated with the price of the media and justifying a higher price for higher quality environments um, that might be very important for um, some, 
some kinds of marketers uh, in in some contexts. And you know, at present, I guess the 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 straw man uh, metric uh, being uh, discussed uh, is the duration weighted viewable video impression standard at the MRC, which was formulated, as I understand it, really as a delivery uh, measure, not as a quality measure, uh, but that when set loose in nature, <laughs> sometimes gets uh, uh, treated as that. Um, and and so uh, I guess part of what I'm curious about is your, um, your sense of the uh, relevance and value of that as a quality metric, um, or uh, what alternative measures you you actually would uh, um, uh, favor? Uh, Rada mentioned completion, for example. Um, in out of home measurement, they've got a, a, a visibility adjustment factor that's been in the market for a while to kind of discount certain locations uh, uh, or prefer some to others. So, um, how do you how do you see the duration weighted viewable video? impression standard in this context and what other measures would you like? So I can jump in because we've spent far too many days or far too many hours uh, dwelling on these duration metrics and so on. And I don't wanna speak for George, but I think what the MRC was trying to do was to lay out some minimum thresholds of what defines an impression. It was by no means meant to be a quality metric. It was by no means meant to be a value metric and it was no means uh, meant to be a transactional metric or something that flows through the currency ecosystem. They were trying to do something very specific and it has been taken out of context and perhaps misused because I think it's easier to go with lowest common denominator than to have nuance and substance and sophistication in your thinking, right? It's just easy uh, to do that, but we can't fall into that. And I want to make a distinction between comparability and false equivalency. What we have when we say all impressions are the same is false equivalency. And what you have when you say comparability is how do I look at this in the context of something else? And those two concepts are getting uh, mixed up and that's really, really problematic for this ecosystem. But you want us here, Scott, not just to criticize, but also to be productive and uh, move the dialogue forward. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit on what both Bharat and Tina were saying. Ultimately, we treat, we can't treat marketers or agencies or advertisers as static, as people who just consume whatever is fed their way. And I say this as a marketer because we're marketing the biggest TV shows and programs on the planet, right? We have specific outcomes that are tied to every campaign and every investment. So reducing things to a lowest common denominator does not help us. Telling us that this was delivered in this environment with this length, with perhaps this outcome, helps us model out future investments. So it is not a metric, but a series of metrics that we are looking at, that we are laddering up to outcomes. So. I know we all want simplicity. I know we want all want clarity, but the world is a complex place and this ecosystem is a complex place. So we, in this case, as the marketer or the outcome owner are going to have to own a degree of complexity, take a series of individual metrics, but then make sense of them in our own business context. Somebody who advises agencies and marketers, I totally agree with that. Super. Um, let's talk briefly in the remaining uh, moments about uh, another uh, metric that is uh, put forward um, for uh, uh, on the argument of it being uh, comparable and um, uh, effective as a means of uh, uh, thinking about the value of an ad impression, and that is attention metrics. Um, and you know we have multiple approaches to that. And we've seen some agencies uh, uh, sort of specialize in, in uh, trying to factor this into planning. Uh, how, how should the industry be uh, thinking about the value of attention metrics from your perspective uh, as a proxy for quality? Um, I think, look, attention is, um, is a good metric. Um, I suspect it impacts the TV first because we always assume that if the ad airs on TV, it's 100% viewable and everybody is counted as putting their eyes on it as compared to digital where, you know, there's a duration, the length of play. I mean, of course, people could be doing something else, but the nature of the medium 
uh, means you are probably looking at the ad. So I suspect that's what's going to happen where your cost of, you know, um, the of attention metric um, is, is probably going to bring down uh, the number of viewers who are actually paying 100% attention. But what that means in practical terms is that the cost is going to go up. So, you know, instead of having the cost per viewable impression is the same thing on digital, you can have a flat CPM and the moment you account for attention, it's going to go up. Where it helps is in planning. So a lot of times buying, and we heard that content is being divorced from ads. So like, oh, but if you look from a comms planning perspective and a brand marketing objective perspective, um, data on attention helps us make better choices when it comes to programming and partner selections and builds a context around where our ads should air. And that's where I see the most value right now. Excellent. Well, I believe we are at the two o'clock hour. So uh, let me uh, just thank you for this very brief uh, touching down on questions of quality uh, and turn the, uh, the mic back over to John to say good day. Thank well, you. Thank you so much to Scott, Barad, um, Rada, uh, and Tina for a fascinating discussion. That brings our proceedings on day one of the Sim Summit. And Tina, I should say, sorry from Google, apologies. Um, that brings our proceedings on day one of the Sim Summit to a close.